guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are talking about probably my favorite makeup product ever, and that is the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize. These are her cream shadows that come in these little glass pots. I have to tell you, the moment I discovered these, I fell in love, hence the reason why I had eight of them. I'm pretty sure I have every single color. I might be missing one or two, but I thought today we can kind of go through each of the colors that I have, swatch them, and then I'll show you how I like to apply them on my eyes. What I like most about these compared to other cream pot eyeshadows is these seem to have like a whipped formula to them, and they're all like slightly multi-dimensional. Like they're obviously just one color, but because they have like a... I don't want to call them duochrome, but kind of like a shift to them. When you put them on your eyes, even if you're wearing just that one eyeshadow, you really look like you have a couple of different eyes, like colors on your eyes. And I think that's because of just like the multi-dimensional effect of them. And because they are a whipped texture, you can apply them either with your fingers or a brush. Either way works super duper well. I apply them on my upper lid and sometimes I'll apply them on my lower lash line. They are a bit on the pricey side. They're right around $35 but you can get them on sephora.com or a couple of other places. I will link them all down below for you. One other thing I'll mention before we get into swatching is they have changed the name of some of these and I have the older version with the older name. So if the name is different now, I will put it on the screen for you. Okay, well let's start out with Marie Antoinette, shall we? So here is what it looks like up close. You can see it's like a taupey neutral brown. There is a tiny bit of maybe like microscopic silver like shimmer or maybe glitter in these but I wouldn't call any of these glittery. Here's what it looks like swatched on my arm and I will do a close-up of these after we're done swatching all of them. Okay the next one I'll swatch for you guys is called rose gold. Here's what rose gold looks like up close. You could tell it's like a true rose gold. There's definitely like a golden shift there. You can definitely tell by looking at my pans or my pots which ones of these I use the most. And this is definitely one of them. I also have noticed that these don't dry out really quickly like some other cream pot eyeshadows do. I think that's because of the glass packaging and they're just sealed really well. So there's rose gold. Okay, next one is in the color star gold and this one is going to be your coppery gold color. I'm not a huge fan of gold eyeshadows. I do think they have a time and place. Um, this one's a little bit more wearable than the other gold one that I'll show you here in a minute, which is called Golden Eclipse. This has more of a brown undertone to it, whereas that one is like a true, true gold. Okay, so here's what star gold looks like up close. You can tell I've only used this one a couple of times. This one does seem to have golden flecks in it as well, like that micro glitter I was telling you about before. And here's what it swatches like, a true like copper penny gold. Okay, next let's talk about Golden Eclipse. This one definitely has a lot more like yellow gold properties to it. There's a lot of golden shift here. There's a lot of golden like micro sparkle in here. It's going to be your true gold. It would work really well for like holiday makeup or if you just like gold eyeshadow. This one is perfect. You can tell how smooth these are when I swatch them, you guys. They that whipped texture makes them so like movable and wearable but once they dry they stay put and they're not gonna like smudge all over your eyelids okay next one is called Jean this one does have a new name now I think it's like champagne and this one's gonna be your kind of white gold everyday like beigey champagne color holy moly it's so pretty this one is absolutely perfect for like a one and done easy eye look or days when you want just a little bit of something on your eyelids. This one doesn't seem to have any of that micro sparkle in it that we were talking about before. It does still have that multi-dimensional effect to it, but there isn't any like micro sparkle. Oh, so pretty, you guys. Okay, next we have Mona. Uh, Mona Lisa, which is a chocolate brown. It's not called Mona Lisa anymore. This is the darkest of the bunch. I was really scared of this color at first, but you can sheer it out and make it really wearable for every day. So here is what Mona Lisa looks like up close. You can tell it's a dark, like rich chocolate brown with a cool undertone. This one also doesn't seem to have any of the micro sparkle in it. There's like a like a silver shift to it possibly, but there isn't any micro sparkle in it. And here is the swatch of it. So just like rich and really pretty. Okay, the last two I have are limited edition colors. I'm going to include them in this video just because that's what this video is all about, but they may or may not be available still when you're watching this video, depending on when you're watching this video. My favorite of the bunch is Sunset Rose. This is the closest to Pillow Talk, which is 
Charlotte Tilbury is a quintessential color and pretty much everything. Uh, there is not a Pillow Talk Eyes to Mesmerize though, but this is the closest you're going to get to it. It is a perfect, like, mauve pink. Oh, it's so pretty. Here's what it looks like up close. You can tell it's a perfect pink. If you're a pink eyeshadow fan, oh, you're going to love this one. This one does seem to have maybe some of that silver, like, micro sparkle in it, but nothing too crazy. Again, none of these are glittery. So here's what it looks like swatched. So pretty. I wish this one wasn't limited edition. It's so pretty. And comparing it to rose gold, you can tell rose gold definitely has more gold properties, whereas this one is more like silver, mauve pink. Okay, last one is Copper Sunrise. And the best way I can describe this is it's like rose gold without the rose. So it's gold, but it has like a tiny bit of like a, a sunrise aspect to it. Like there's maybe a little bit of orange in there, I guess. I, I, I'm not explaining this well. I'll just have to show you. So you can see it's definitely less bronzy than star gold. It's lighter than golden eclipse. It's very similar to rose gold without the rose. And here's what it swatches like on the arm. I'll do a couple of other swatches comparing some that are pretty similar so you can see the difference. Okay, you guys, let's test my memory here. So this is... Marie Antoinette, this one is rose gold, this one is star gold, golden eclipse is right here, Jean is right here, Mona Lisa, sunset rose, and copper sunrise. And then just so you can see the difference of some of the similar ones up close, right here is copper sunrise, here is rose gold, so you can see you probably don't need both of these if you have one or the other. Rose gold is a little bit lighter, but they do still have those like rosy golden-y properties to them. And then this is Sunset Rose. So you can definitely apply these as a one and done, but I'm gonna do a little bit of extra just because, you know, for the purpose of the video. So I'm gonna use this Too Faced Teddy Bear palette here and a big fluffy brush to apply a cream shadow all over my lid as a base. Then I'm gonna go into this color, this bigger color up here. It's kind of like a mid-tone brown just to get a crease shade going. Okay, so I think I'm actually gonna do Marie Antoinette all over my lid and then I'm gonna pop Jean in the middle. I forgot how much I loved Jean and then as I was watching it today, I was like, oh my gosh, so pretty. So you can apply this with your fingertips. My nails are a little bit longer and I'm just having problems like digging my finger in there right now. So I'm gonna use a brush. You can definitely use your fingertips though. You can use a fluffy brush or a flat shader brush, whichever you have on hand. Anything will really work. These are super, super flexible, like I was stating. I find they work best if you start with a little bit and build it up. You don't want to put too much on all at once because it might be a little bit thicker or darker than you wanted, and then it's hard to take off. So it's better to just kind of build. Okay, and if you find that your edges are kind of messy, just take a like fluffy blending brush and... There's nothing on this brush, by the way. Maybe like extra eyeshadow left over from before. But I'm just gonna run over the edges to kind of blend it out and smooth them out. This like taupey neutral is so perfect for any makeup look. It's light, it's not too dark. I think it's perfect. I love Marie Antoinette, it's one of my favorites. I'm gonna hang on to this because I'm gonna go back to it for my lower lash line. But I'm gonna go ahead and put Jean on first. I'm gonna use my finger. It's just hard because I need to cut my nails. I actually need to go get my nails done, but you know, that's harder to do. Harder, easier said than done, right? So I'm gonna just dot this on like the center of my lid. This is just gonna brighten things up a little bit. Nothing too crazy. And then I'm gonna go back to Marie Antoinette and use, oop, that's not the right brush, the tip of that flat shader brush to get a little bit of product on there. And I'm gonna put that on my lower lash line. Kinda like eyeliner. So this by itself is definitely more than enough for your everyday wear. I'm gonna turn the ring light off so you can kinda see it in more natural light, just so you can see, again, just a light, beautiful, like, glossy. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. But because I am gonna film a couple more videos after this, I just wanna put a little bit more, like, definition on the outer part of my eye. You could definitely use a darker eyes to mesmerize if you wanted to, but I'm just going to get some powder shadow. I'm going to dip into this like darker brown of the teddy bear palette and just dot a little bit here 
just to give like a tiny bit more dimension, you know what I mean? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and apply liner and mascara and I'll be back to show you the final look. Okay, you guys, so here is the final look with liner and lashes. I am telling you, these are worth the splurge. They are so good. I've had some of these for quite a few years, probably three plus years, and they haven't dried out on me. They still work super well. They don't have a weird smell to them or anything like that. They're perfect for like every day, especially in the summertime, in the springtime, when you just want something light and easy. You can also dress them up with other shadows. I just think that they are the perfect shadow. Usually when I'm traveling, I will grab like one or two of these, throw them in my bag, maybe like a small powder palette, and then that's it. Like they're perfect. So I hope that this guys help I hope that this helped you guys decide what colors you like, what colors you want to buy. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next time.